Somewhat obviously, this is a circle, and I put two black dots on it. Let's say, for argument's sake, when I turn this one turn, that lower dot has to travel 10 centimetres. Obviously, this dot, because it's further out, has to travel further, and let's say, again, for argument's sake, 100 centimetres. Now, if I spin that one spin, in one spin, that travels 10 centimetres, that travels 100 centimetres, in the same time. What that means is, that's going faster. Now, this is not something that's escaped people, and you find this really simple disc idea being used in a CVT. Because if I put another disc on there, as I spin that here, that disc will turn at one speed. As I move it away from the centre, the speed of the disc gets faster. And of course, that's been used in variable transmissions in things like lawnmowers. And you can think of a disc as lots of little circles all laid together side by side going outward. But we don't only need to do that, of course. We could lay them one on top of each other as they decrease in their diameter. And if we do that, what we get is a cone. Now, a cone has exactly the same property. The further down the cone it's going, then the faster it must move for exactly the same reason that it happens with the disc. And the further up, then the slower it would move. Now that can be jolly handy. Because if I push a cylinder along a flat surface, it'll travel in a straight line. But if I push a cone along a flat surface, it'll go around and round a circle because of that difference in speed. Now if we want to make a cylinder do that, what we've got to do is turn one side faster than the other. And it's exactly why cars have differentials, because when they're turning a corner, the outer wheel must turn faster than the inner wheel. Now, this curious property of cones was probably noticed about 1898 by a chap called Henry Timkin, who introduced a brand new bearing based on this. And this was a real game changer for that time, because at that time, really, bearings were little more than an axle and a hole stuffed with animal grease. This new style of bearing could transfer the load much better and was subject to much less friction. And he called it a tapered roller bearing. And of course, tapered roller bearings are absolutely everywhere now because of course they want to go in a circle. A cylinder is fighting against that circular motion. A cone will go with that motion and so is much more efficient. Now you can construct a taper bearing by imagining a series of cones all meeting at the same point. And the point at which they meet defines the angle of that cone, and so you can construct the inner race, the taper roller itself, and the outer race. The advantages of them is that they don't scuff or wear as much at the edges of the roller like they would in a plain roller bearing. Let's go back to differentials for a minute. This is an Evans differential, and what you can see is two cones at the same size placed side by side, so the distance between them is the same. Now this roller connects the two, it's a bit thick, it just means that you can see it more easily, but as I turn this one, it turns the roller, turns that one, and because this is smaller, then it's turning faster, and this is larger, so the output will be slower. And of course, I can move that roller to change that speed, and I can move it up and down anywhere along those lines, creating a constantly variable transmission. Now, I'm shoving this rod in and out, but if I were to construct it the second rod above and drive that in and out by turning a screw, then I would have one that I could control without actually having to shove this rod in order to get a constantly variable transmission. Now, I've done the files for this, and they are available on Thingiverse, so I'll put a link in the description should anyone want to muck around with an <laughs> Evans differential. So if taper bearings are so all singing, all dancing, why aren't they absolutely everywhere? Well, it's like everything. It has its benefits and it has its disadvantages. Taper bearings tend to be slower because they create more friction and they're very sensitive to misalignment which can permanently damage something. So they do have a lot of really good uses, they do have a lot of limitations as well. And roller bearings of course have been used all over the place including a type called the cross roller bearing which we made in video 2326. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video as well, in case anybody's interested. They do make tapered cross-roller bearings, but not so much. 
A cross roller bearing is where the bearing surfaces are at 90 degrees, actually 45 degrees in the direction of rotation, and they're crossed over in an X configuration. What that means is they can handle loads regularly, axially, and moment loads, and so they get a lot of uses in things like robotics, for example. Now we've got a lot into continuously variable transmissions and into bearings and bearing types. There's one more area where you find rods and cones competing against each other, along with balls incidentally, and that is in the area of drives. Now we have looked at and built models of quite a number of drives, including the NIF drive, which is based on spheres, the Archimedes drive, which is based on rods, and this, which was based on a cross roller drive. A number of people have said, I should have made the rollers tapered. They're probably right. Now, one of the things that I wanted for this was that it was a cross roller. When I did this, I took half of them out, so I'm probably going to regret it. So I'm probably going to put them back in and make it a true cross roller. But rollers and cones and spheres compete with each other over various applications. And the constant question is, which is best? And the answer to which is best is none of them. They all have their uses and they all have their limitations. To my mind, the thing to do is to explore, see how it actually works out and what might be a way of improving it and what might be a way of not improving it. Anyway, I thought I'd go on a rundown on the simple geometry and how simple geometry can lead to some amazingly complex and interesting things that are in fact all related to each other. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Bit of a whistle stop, but thank you for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.